Okay, let's talk today about bivariate variables. Um, we can also talk, you can also call them uh, a two sample T test, a two sample T test. Uh, in order to do that, we have to have a bivariate variable. It's also called Boolean, right? Which means one of two dichotomous, which means one of two dichotomous. There's another term as well, but you get the point. Uh, we're looking for a variable that has ones and zeros because that's how we do it. In the case of gender here, uh, one is going to be male, zero is going to be female, uh, male, female. We do these in terms of uh, zeros and ones because that way we can turn them into numbers. But we'll play with that in a minute. How do I erase this? We'll play with all of that in a minute. And then over here on the right-hand side, we also have training, which often means no training, yes training, no training, no training, yes training, right? You either have been to training or you haven't been to training. Um, I teach a lot of business courses and in, uh, in the MBA level, we often get into discussion about whether or not particular um, particular activities as a supervisor make sense, right? Do you send your employees to training or do you not send your employees to training? And so the question we're going to ask today is, is there a difference? Is there a difference between employees who go to training, go to training, and those that do not. And so the scenario here is you are a manager and you have a sales team in front of you and you say to yourself, how do I increase uh, sales? And you have an external party that says, hey, pay me a bunch of money. We'll fly your people out to New York or Hawaii or whatever. And we're going to give them training on sales. And when they come back, they'll be able to generate a higher level of sales. So this particular data set that we have in front of you, you know, we have all of these individuals noting that every line is an observation, right? Every single one of these is an observation going that way. And that every column is a variable, right? So this is a variable. And we care very much right now about our sales variable. Like that's the one that matters. And here we're gonna measure how many sales any one person is, uh, is having. And we're going to compare those who have training and those who do not have training. So there's a variety of things that we can do here. Uh, one of the things I like to do when we do this is we keep the variables that we need, we delete all the other ones. But that's bad practice. We don't wanna delete the original data set ever. So unless you've made a copy of this, what I would do here is take the two variables that we care about. We care about sales and training. I suppose you would have like, let me, let me insert. You'd wanna keep the names, right? So this is uh, Joey and uh, this is also a male. So Todd and Maria and this is a guy. So uh, Frank and uh, 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 I don't know. Jessica, and then we would be able to identify who's who here, but we don't really care about the who's who. I mean, you do as a supervisor, right? But we're not going to answer that question with, is there a difference between employees who go to training and those who do not? And that'll make sense in just a second. In order to do that, we have to be able to identify those that went to training and how much sales they had. So I'm gonna grab these two columns, control shift down, and it looks like we have 300 observations or so. And I'm going to copy them to a brand new sheet so that we only worry about sales and training, right? Now, there's a variety of ways to do what we're going to do next. A pretty spreadsheet is a strong spreadsheet. So let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to center this. Matter of fact, we'll center the whole thing. Center everything, but doesn't scales. Let's make a little bit of space here. Uh, I always like to take a couple of minutes to clean this up a little bit. Just makes me feel a little bit more professional. And I want to sort these. You can do this uh, by highlighting them all. And where's the sort button? One of these over here. This guy right here on the top right-hand corner. Sort and filter. 
will sort, you know, smallest to largest, custom sort or whatever. Uh, you can filter out one for the other. The other real thing you can do here is insert a table. Does this have table? My table has headers. And now we have a table and sorting becomes real easy by using these drop arrows in the bottom right hand corner of your header. S sort smallest to largest. I really don't care, right? What I do care is that all, in this case, the zeros are on the top and all the ones are at the bottom, right? If I were to zoom all the way out here, you could see that from here up, we have those who did not, you know, no training goes this way, and those who did training goes this way, right? And that's fine. Similarly, we could grab all of these guys, control shift down and cut them, and we could place them side by side all the way up to the top. Do, 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 do. We could place them over here somewhere, right? Sales and training. For the purposes of this uh, methodology, they don't have to be all lined up and they also don't have to be paired, right? So I go down here to the bottom and there's a couple more people who have no training as opposed to those who do have training. It's not, this is different from a regression where you have to have uh, paired uh, data sets. We don't really have to have paired data sets here. We're going to come up with two separate ones here in a second. I'm not the biggest fan of doing it separately. So I'm going to take these guys and leave them in the column. The ones at the bottom, zeros at the top. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my data tab. And over here on the right hand side, we have data analysis. Now, if you don't have data analysis, the best way to get this is go to file. And now we're looking for options. Under options, you'll find add-ins. So click on add-ins. And down here at the bottom, it'll have manage Excel add-ins. We're gonna go to go. And we're gonna click the first one that says analysis tool pack, right? Not the virtual basic. We're not gonna do any real coding here. So just make sure you have this first one. Every Excel should have it and hit okay. If you're on Apple, the options button is not under file. I don't remember where it is exactly, but if you can find the options button, you can get to here, right? Okay. And now when you come back to data, this data analysis tab should magically appear. We're gonna hit data analysis and we're going to find the t-test. Now we have four different two sample tests, okay? We're gonna use the two sample assuming unequal variances. When you don't know what to do, use the two sample assuming unequal variances. The other ones are, are you know, valid tests uh, and they have particular examples on when we would use pair samples or you know, Z tests or whatever. But this one is your catch all, right? You don't know exactly what to do. You're running your homework and you know, you're doing the stuff. You don't know which one to use, use this one. Now, sidebar, if you're in a stats two class and you're going over all the four different versions of how to run a t-test, then you need to know which of the four you're running. Are you running a paired? Are you running a two sample? Are you running a Z? Are you running a T? Uh, you need to know. In direct application in the real world, uh, or if you don't know, or if it doesn't matter, run the two sample assuming unequal variances um, and that'll get you close. It'll get you there. It'll, it'll answer the question that we're gonna answer, right? So we hit okay and we have variable one range and we have variable two range. Now, the zeros now matter because I'm gonna highlight those, uh, I'm going to highlight those sales people who have not gone to training. They're going to be my first observation. I'm going to highlight all the way down. Oh, it just changed to ones, right? So I'm going to go down to this one. This is my last zero. So variable one range is my non-trained, right? And variable two range is going to be everybody else. Starting at one, I, the researcher, am identifying which ones are trained and which ones are untrained. 
And now you can see I've gone from A2 to 160 and from 161 to 304 because I know that they're different. In this case, we did not click labels, so don't click on labels. And let's put T test results. You don't have to name the sheet. It'll just say results or whatever. Hit OK, and you'll get something that looks kind of like this. All right. Let's make this so that we can see it because we're going to play with it a little bit. All right. Now let's interpret what we have, right? We have two variables. Let's go to draw. Give me the pen. I'll do it in red. That's fine. Do it in purple. No, I'll do it in red. Yeah, do it in red. The mean is the very first thing I'm going to look at. This tells me the average for no training. Remember how I did that for variable one and training for variable two. These are the labels, right? So if you set up your data to grab labels, you can throw in labels. But if not, just delete this. Matter of fact, let me just click here and put no training. And I'll go to the other one and put yes training which is a little simplistic but you know let's spread this out a little bit you know what else i can also again a pretty spreadsheet is a strong spreadsheet right let me do that guy and let's close it up a little bit there we go isn't that pretty that's pretty i like that no training yes training all right okay and we keep going um Observations tells me how many I have, right? So I care about how many there are. There are slightly more, um, there are slightly more non-trainees than trainees. That's fine. Uh, my T statistics, blah, 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 blah. We're not gonna care. I mean, we do care about this stuff, but for the practical applications, I care about these guys. Okay. This is what I care about here. Um, and let's talk about why. At this point, you have, to, you have to ask yourself, what is my hypothesis? And you have one of two hypotheses here. Clearly, you're trying to figure out if they're different or if they're not different, right? If I ask the question, hypothesis one, are they different? then my null hypothesis is they, I shouldn't ask the question, right? That's not, that's not appropriate, that's not appropriate. My hypothesis is a statement, not a question, always a statement. They are different. The two groups are different. And my null is they are not different, right? And this is gonna to translate to mu sub one is I shouldn't put an equal sign here. I'm just going to put a dash. Is not equal to mu sub 2. And this one's going to say mu sub 1 is equal to mu sub 2, where mu is the average, right? This is mu sub 1, and this is mu sub 2. Well, I look at these two, and clearly they're not equal, right? The ones with yes training have a little bit more sales than the ones with no training. And the reason we do a sophisticated model is to say, are they actually different, right? We care about the, the reliability of the test. We wanna be able to replicate this over and over and over again. And we're saying, oh, it's very close. What if just randomly the yes training people uh, just happen to have a larger number? Then it's not appropriate. Again, let me highlight this. Maybe if I highlight these guys. Oh, that doesn't really help, does it? Anyway, let me just box them again, okay? In this case, my t-test, my t-test is a t uh, variable, or it's not a variable, it's a t-statistic. This is my t-stat, and this is my p-value. I know it's a p-value because it says here, the probability that t is less than or equal to t, right? But because I'm asking the question, they are different. I don't care if one is bigger than the other. This is a two. This is a two-tail test. I don't care if they're different. I mean, I do care if they're different. I don't care if one's greater than the other. I only care that they're different. My tails here in my hypothesis testing constitute 
my alpha, right? And we haven't picked one, but I'm just going to say alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And if this is alpha equal to 0 0.05, then half of alpha, alpha divided by 2, is in this tail. And alpha divided by 2 is in this tail. So what is the area under the tail here? 0 0.0250. And the area under the tail here is 0 0.025. Zero. Together they add up to 0 0.05. So again, for applicative purposes, we're not really going to worry about this. Just know that half the tail's on the left, half the tail's on the right. And what I'm really going to do is I'm going to look at this p-value. Maybe I should highlight it instead of putting a box on it. Delete. I can't delete it. Thank you. Here's my highlighted, right? And I'm going to ask the question, is this smaller or larger than 0 0.05. Why 0 0.05? Because I have declared, I the researcher, right? If you're doing this for homework, then you'll see it as a problem. But I the researcher have declared that this is greater than, or that 0 0.05 is gonna be my alpha. That is my choice, okay? So is this bigger than, is this smaller than, is P smaller than alpha? That's the question, right? And look at it, you can see it right here. Is t smaller than t, right? This is the probability of t smaller than t. So I'm gonna ask the question, is this number, the highlighted number, smaller than my alpha? And the answer is no. It is not smaller than my alpha. It is bigger than my alpha, 0.36, is bigger than 0.05. So I cannot conclude that they are different. And that is, and that's my research conclusion, right? No. What this means is I cannot conclude that the two groups are different. Exclamation mark. Eh, period. So we back all the way back out to the bigger question. And the bigger question is, should we spend money on this training? Now, you remember this. This this actually, we do this in real life, by the way. There are 300, let me go down to the bottom here. There are 300, there are 300 plus salespeople across the country. They're going to charge us per person, plus travel and hotel, probably in Hawaii, so that everybody's nice and happy and gets all the warm feelings and all the warm, fuzzy feelings that they need, right? But when I look at my results, I cannot conclude that the two groups are different. But wait, look, the yes trainees had more sales than the no trainees. Doesn't matter. It's not replicable. What we're saying is, this is a random occurrence that they are slightly more, that the yeses are slightly bigger than the noes. If we were to run this again, it might be the other way around. There is, we cannot prove that there, at 0 0.05, we cannot prove that there is a difference between the two groups. We are not spending money on this training. And you can see as an HR director or as a sales manager, how powerful this can be, right? This can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in training, in management selection, in any other facet of development of your employees. This group can do it and this group cannot. Well, is it smaller than 0.05? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Let's do it. Is it smaller than 0.05? No, it isn't. All right, then we don't do it. In this particular example, 0.361296 is not smaller than alpha. Therefore, there is no difference. Therefore, we don't spend money on training.